put me in the corner there. Put Nate in the corner. All right, this is my message to the masses. This is my John 3.16, as, as short as I can give it, the, you know, the Nate Bible. So what we see 90% of the time is chronic issues, and they can manifest as an acute issue, but usually what we see, like an example would be the sacroiliac joint. It's a big, strong, stable joint in your, in your lower back, holds your pelvis and your sacrum together. So it's this very big joint. Actually, half the joint is fibrous. So for you to sprain that joint, it's not that you've just done something crazy. Usually people that are doing that, are, it's like they're picking up a pen or they're twisting. And it's just that little motion. So it's been set up to do that. There's a chronic problem that you might not have felt going on that caused that to sprain so easily. So that's what we're seeing. So that's why I say 90%. Actually, if I was being honest, I'd probably say 100%, but no one will believe it. So 90% of chronic back pain is due to improper functional movement patterns. What does that mean? So we're going to talk about that and why that happens. And I'm just going to break that down into a short little sound bite for you. So this is my chart I got in one of my rooms here. So let's run through this quickly and then I'm going to read a little paper. So we got macro trauma is big injury, micro trauma is little injury. Micro trauma is usually pain over... Uh, um, damage over time. That's usually what we call not using your spinal rector muscles um, and just doing things with a rounded spine. Rounding, bending at the spine causes that atrophy and causes that microtrauma. You're putting slight tears in there. Um, so acute injury, we just talked about that. You know, that's actually something that you're actually injured and does need time to heal. And like I said, you can have acute issues arise from chronic issues and that's most cases here. Something chronic is causing the acute. So we have imbalances present. There's either ligamentous and joint tissue distortions, but usually that starts with the muscular. That starts with those imbalances, overstretched muscles, and that leads into the arthritis, the degeneration, and the instability. So I'm just going to read this. Spinal stability treatment plan for chronic conditions. There's not really a step one, step two here, but these two are the beginning ones. We'll just read chiropractic first because that's what you guys are more familiar with. So the main goal is to remove stress on the spinal cord and the nerve roots by mobilizing vertebral segments. That's what we call an adjustment. We're correcting the subluxation. Adhesion in the joint and ligamentous tissue causes restriction and can put tension on the spine, which affects the spinal curvature. So we get that rounding, the forward head, that's all distortions in the spinal curvatures. Chiropractic is not designed to remove pain or heal injured joints, but simply remove the stress and torsion on the spine, which likely caused the injury in the first place, or to begin with. So what are you saying there, Nate? So when you have a sprained sacroiliac joint, I can't, you know, I can shove that joint all I want, but it's still torn tissue. Now I can put it in a state where it will heal faster, but obviously I cannot heal a torn tissue. So usually when people have lots of pain like that, yeah, there's that issue there. So continue with chiropractic care through each stage of your treatment plan. Chiropractic will become most effective in helping you reach your optimal level once you have completed the rest of the treatment plan flow here. So we got foundation training, which you should begin pretty much immediately with a chronic condition unless you're in a lot of pain. So if it's chronic, you're not really in a lot of pain, or you might not even feel that you're in pain at all. I mean, and there's, I've had people like this even today, like they're not in pain, they're just coming in and they're like, well, how bad am I? I'm like, well, she asked if she was a one, one was good. And I said, you're probably seven out of 10 because I can feel lots of atrophy and I can feel degeneration starting. She was like blown away. She's like, but I don't have any pain. So the main goal is to eliminate pain and atrophy of the spinal erector muscles is the root cause of abnormal spinal curvatures and pain. When the spinal muscles no longer perform their job, the lig ligamentous structures and joint tissue is left to support the spinal structure. The ligament and joint tissue cannot contract. They can only stretch hypermobility or sprain. It's all stretching. Or become rigid. That's your osteoarthritis or your degenerative dis uh, joint disease or disc disease. I consider discs joints as well. It's the same type of tissue through arthritic buildup. The joints and ligaments are the last line of defense before neurological compromise, which leads to organ and tissue failure and ultimately death, you know, because if your organs are failing, you will die. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna die from having bad posture. Yes. There are free materials available on the foundation training site, but I highly recommend the core elements program, retraining your brain to connect with the inhibited and atrophied spinal rector muscles takes not only uh, specialized exercises, but education and understanding and how the body is supposed to function. Foundation training is the only program I will allow. This is because people are like, oh, I'm doing yoga or I'm doing this. And I'm like, well, I don't see any change. 
Uh, I see change with this. I've seen change, major change in my life. I've seen change in people who actually go ahead and start doing this program. Because if you're taking, that, well, that's next, corrective exercises. If you're going into your, your exercises with an unstable spine, you can be a big, strong guy and have a weak spine. And you can have, you know, and that's when the injuries are going to start happening because you need to learn to strengthen your spine first. That's your foundation. Um, get those erector muscles, multifidus muscles working right and strong and so they can decompress you. So corrective exercises. This would be what I'd call the second step. So after you've been doing chiropractic and foundation training for a while, you know, at least a month, then you can start moving into your corrective exercises. So once the spinal muscles are strong, you can now look to your chiropractor for advice on where you are still weak. So this could be pelvic tilt, one hip higher than the other, um, uh, unilateral correction, so one shoulder's higher, one hip is higher, you got some twisting, torsion, head tilts, um, and just side to side muscle imbalances. Because you know, strengthen the spine is actually going to help eliminate most of this stuff, but I can, I can still see how there could be some left. And usually just doing foundation training is going to be enough. And then you can start moving into strengthening the rest of your body or starting to, to lose weight. You know, if that's your main goal and you want to do cardio to lose weight, to get stress off the joint, yes, that's good. But first you got to hit the spine. First you got to strengthen your spine before you can even think about losing the weight. The weight can wait, right? That's one of Nate's rules. You want to create a healing environment. Um, joints don't heal well if there's acidity and um, uh, inflammation constantly to be created. You know, autoimmune diseases are definitely an issue there. And we know with autoimmunes that the it's the processed grains and stuff. So sugar leads to acidity, feeds a yeast overgrowth in the gut, creates chronic inflammation in the body, can slow the body's healing, disrupt digestion, leaky gut syndrome. So that's when uh, the mucosal layer of the intestine has been so worn down due to all this garbage that um, things like gluten can actually pass through now into the muscular layer where your immune system is allowed. So your immune system does not operate within the gut. It does not go into your intestines, obviously, because there's bacteria and there's natural stuff. There's natural flora that's going to break down your food and absorb things. So you don't want your immune system in there. because So once you've got bacteria in and starting to leak through, that's when your immune system is constantly going to be attacking that. And that can create tons of inflammation. So that's what we call your enteric nervous system is your gut, actually. It's very important. That's, they say 80% of your immune system is involved with that. So leaky guts are a big thing. So the gluten is not a problem. It's the mucosal layer. It's the leaky gut syndrome. The gluten just is a protein that easily, it's small enough that it fit through there and your body starts to attack you and creating the inflammation because it's a foreign invader. So absorption of the essential vitamins and minerals can also a problem there too as well. So once beginning chiropractic and core, core elements, start to remove foods with added sugars. That's your high fructose corn syrup or any, any sugar at all. Um, and you know, there's certain sugars that are okay, like honeys and stuff, but you, overall, you want to cut down, initially, you want to cut down pretty much everything just to get yourself in a better healing state. And grains, of course, bread, pasta, corn, rice. Now, like rice and like organic corn, those are good later on. And like beans, even beans too, it can be an issue. But usually, um, like there's bread, not all bread is created equal. Like Ezekiel bread is good, and, and usually uh, breads from other countries do much better because they're just... They're not GMO and they're not overprocessed. It's usually it's the overprocessing, but it's a lot of sugar in there. So initially, you want to avoid things with sugar from your diet for three weeks. Limit and replace grains and sugars with good alternatives like quinoa and even there I threw in brown rice. So later on, you can actually start to transition into brown rice. And if you want to treat yourself to some pizza, you'll be able to handle it. You know, I'm not saying you can't treat yourself every once in a while. Have a nice burger. That's okay. But right now we're in crisis mode. Continue with chiropractic care throughout. So the main goal is to push your spine to the peak. All restrictions and improper curves are out of the way. So now your spine can be adjusted in the best possible environment. Continue with care also allows, continuing with care also allows us to monitor your condition so old habits do not arise. What happens if the pain continues? Might be something like a neoplasm or something worse. So you want to get checked out. All this stuff that we're doing is still going to help you and make you stronger. So if you do need surgery or do need something else like that, at least you will be on the right path. So it's like, oh, I didn't waste, you know, I wasted all this time. No, you did. You know, your, your body's much stronger. And if you have to have surgery or if you have to have some sort of operation for, you know, God forbid, you know, like a tumor or cancer, um, 
your body will be strong, you'll be able to handle it better, and you'll recover faster, and you'll be able to get back on the back on the boat or back on the train. I don't know. So posture is a reflection of how your brain is functioning, a picture of your neurological state. So we've talked about this before. Health is the roof, an umbrella that protects us from disease and injuries. So we need a strong roof there to protect us. So the pillars are what make the roof stable. Our health will not crumble when issues arise. We all choose different pillars of prevention. So I left them blank for you. So chiropractic, exercise, diet, they're all important to hold up that roof. But the problem is, is the atrophy of the spinal muscles, the lack of spinal stability. That's the foundation. So if you're, you know, foundation isn't strong, chiropractic's not going to work as well. Exercise is actually probably going to harm you because you know, you're taking your bad posture into the gym and you're damaging your joints, unfortunately. So foundation first, symptoms, symptoms versus cause. Stability of the spine is essential to help protect you from neurological and structural pathology. Confusion abounds in regard to posture. It's a great mystery to those who begin to study it. I implore you to dig deeper to understand your body. You're stuck with it for life, so it would be very wise to discover your weaknesses. It's easy It's easy to think. Simple. I'll stand up straight because I hear that all the time. Oh, yeah, I'll stand up straight. But people tend to like lean and like they're not actually using the muscles that lengthen them they're just throwing their hips forward or cocking their head they're all like doing all these weird things that are just confusing so it's, it's just an unlearning process everyone's like oh i gotta jam my shoulders back jam my shoulders back they're not using the muscles that lengthen them unfortunately if you've come to this office in pain you need to come to the realization that you have no idea how to stand and move functionally this was hard for me but through much study and self-evaluation, I unlearned the bad habits and started battling against the muscular imbalances I had created throughout my life. The change has been miraculous, it has. Core elements is to help you discover your weaknesses and develop your core to protect your spine and whole body from injury and degeneration. Chronic conditions are not a singular issue. They have been given time to manifest into a myriad of connected, it, connected issues. We ask, is the spine... Or is it, is it the spine or the muscles? Is it arthritis? All these things are related and must be addressed together to get results. I hear that all day. It's like, oh, oh, it's arthritis. And I'll be like, well, you need to do this. And they're like, oh, well, that's just from the arthritis. I'm like, where did the arthritis come from? We just covered that, right? We know where that came from. So if you're paying attention, you know, <laughs> that, that, that that's not a proper answer. So our society has created an environment that not only limits our motion, but creates muscular imbalances that leads to our joints taking a beating, the micro trauma, trauma over time, and sets us up for a host of issues. Degeneration, arthritis, same thing. Disc degeneration, same thing. Fibromyalgia, radiculopathy, sciatica, so nerve pressure, upper cross and lower cross, and that's your muscular imbalances, that's distortion of the spinal curves. Our arms and legs also suffer because of the state of our spine. We often will not feel the pain first in the spine, but in our shoulders and everything else like that, and your ankles, knee issues, can all be from a lack of stability in the spine. So muscle imbalances always lead to improper posture and injury, microtrauma. Spinal rigidity from joint and ligament degeneration can limit the effectiveness of chiropractic and exercise or even cause harm. Yeah, if you're very unstable and you're going to a chiropractor who uses very harsh manipulative force, uh, yeah, you're gonna injure that joint because there's no stability or it's just gonna go in and go right out. And exercise, same thing, you're lifting weights and you got no stabilizing structure. Yeah, even like things like yoga, um, yoga is great, it's a corrective exercise, but first you gotta stabilize the spine. So yoga itself will not do that. It's close. It's definitely close. I'll give you that. And, and doing it right, I mean, just getting the understanding of how to lengthen your spine is important. And that's what uh, Core Elements is all about. It teaches you decompression and how to breathe properly that you just might not get from yoga. Alterations, because I did, I did yoga for a while. Alterations in your spinal curvatures can increase your risk of injury with normal physical activities. So that's work, exercise, and even walking. So... There's your, your yoga, your work, what you're doing on a daily basis. So you're going to change how you approach exercise. You'll be changing how you approach work. And it's actually become more natural to you. You're not going to have to think about it. Everyone's like thinking and they're, like, eh, they're, eh, they're distorting themselves. It's gonna, your spine will be not atrophied anymore, and so it's just going to do it naturally. So if your spinal cord is under stress, it will affect how you process food and how all your organs function. The sympathetic state, that's the stress state. And it's what most Americans live in on a day-to-day -day basis. So we got to get out of there because when we're hunched, we're in the sympathetic state. So we need to get into the parasympathetic state, which is good deep breathing. 
That's why they do that in yoga. It actually helps take you out of that stress state, and refocus your mind. Cuts in the sympathetic state. Your body's not worrying about digestion. It's on the back burner. It's not worrying about your immune system. It's on the back burner. It's not, your, your heart rate's increased. You know, it's, your heart's overworking. Your lungs are over. You're breathing shallowly. Shallowly. There it is. That's my my short little job 316 to all of you. So there's the website, foundationtraining.com, core elements. Um, definitely uh, look into that. And he's got free stuff on YouTube, but it's just not as de de detailed. And you don't know where to start. Like, where do you start? And he's got some crazy exercise that you don't want to start with because you don't know the basic uh, beginning stuff and that's what the core months is all about it takes you through the beginning stages and starts you simply and builds on that so that's why i'm, I'm uncomfortable um of teaching people exercises um you know in the, in the few minutes i have with you and that's, that's why i'm very uncomfortable like I, I try to show people a few things but i always feel uncomfortable with that because i'm like because the next time you know, this happens every time uh they come back in i'm like oh yeah show me that exercise you're doing I and mean, everyone's doing it wrong because they, they just don't have the foundation they don't have the basis they have to unlearn a lot of things and then and retrain themselves. So hopefully that was helpful. Glad we got to run through that. And hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And have a good night. I'm gonna go eat some dinner. I've been doing this weird uh, one meal a day thing. But I feel great, actually. How do I turn this off? <laughs> I'm running out of things to say.